Hello there everyone and welcome to another video here with Hypnotherapy Training International and today I'm here with Dr. John Butler. Hello Idan. Hello. Hello John. So John, there is a big topic of no, learning to say no and some people mm -hmm. say we use it too much, some people will say we don't actually use it enough, some people say when we use it we don't use it with authenticity and some people say we, we avoid it and, and there's a lot of things around that big word no and it's a very mm. common word mm. but maybe not common enough mm. perhaps you can tell us a little bit about your thoughts and your understanding of learning to say no and how it's related to uh, I call it self-hypnosis some people call it personal development but I take yeah. it from you as self-hypnosis as working on, on yourself through hypnotherapy perhaps you can tell us okay. a little bit about that well, you've just come up with this topic, so where do you start? Because it's a big topic. Uh, well, it's a, it's a great topic, really, because there's an old saying. Uh, you can never say yes until you can really say no. When you're, Then your yes has become genuine and honest. Yeah, they're from the heart. Uh, when we say yes all the time and we don't really mean it, we are sometimes in passive-aggressive mode. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of resentment to the person that's putting the pressure on us. And maybe we don't express that, but it comes out in other ways. So that may be very harmful to relationships. That's part of the casualty. We're angry with ourselves. Our own relationship, we can feel weak. We feel we're not strong. We can feel um, yeah, guilt and shame about that. So there's a lot of negatives that come out of feeling uh, too weak to say yes and no when it matters. So no comes from having self-belief, self-understanding, being able to recognize, uh, for example, that in some situations, yeah, you may just not want to do that thing, or in the case it's unethical as you see it, um, but not being afraid of the rejection of others. So that means you have to be able to mark your own scorecard. Yes. And now you can only do that when you've learned enough self-appreciation, self-respect, and self-love. So that's part of the therapeutic growth. You talked about self-hypnosis and self-development. Yes. Absolutely essential to be able to progress along that path if you're, able, if you're ever going to be able to say no, because only then is it you can say yes with full conviction. Um, you're always holding something back, you see. There's a lot of manipulation going in there when we say yes. We really are often trying to do something, get something from the other person that is not really healthy. For both parties yeah. you've heard the expression the old chinese saying if a man injured me once shame on him if he injured me twice shame on me yeah. in other words i'm complicit in encouraging him to do bad which harms him and harms me uh, and other people perhaps as well that are that are he may be involved with so uh, powerfully saying no is a form of assertiveness now assertiveness is a big topic and this is what i was kind of getting into here about to assert on one level can be just a simple fact that uh, here we are on this Sunday and it's asserting that this is Sunday, this day of the week, but asserting our talents or abilities into the world in that self-expression way, self-actualizing way, without the fear and worry about other people, what they think, when we're not harming anybody. But as Perl says, most have spent our lives worshiping at the altar of what other people think. In other words, we are so into approval seeking, which is that poor, tawdry substitute for affection, for love, for other things. So approval seeking is really only for a very small child or somebody who's not in full possession of their, yet of their ability or, or has lost them, their faculties. Maybe they're very aged and they're you know, suffering neurodegenerative disorder of one kind or another. So. The majority of people in between do not, as adults, need that approval. They need affection, love, and they need to be able to do so much for themselves so that they're not then looking to other people, the external world, for validation. And the only way you'll do that as an adult, when you don't self-believe, and you don't have enough of that self-belief, you're going to start manipulating people. So when you're into that path, you know, you're going to be encouraging others to do it. There's going to be all this game playing going on and you'll never be really assertive. So healthy forms of assertion can be very mild, so you know, silent even, because you're not participating in something that you don't want to participate in or saying no or no when you need to be able to say it <laughs> and having the confidence, the willingness to do it. 
And so I feel that um, saying no is a very great thing for our clients to learn. I've always said, well, at least for about 40 years, I've said the most beautiful word in the language is the word no, just two letters. And because so much hinges on that, saying no to ourselves when our own worst aspects, no to our addictions to food or alcohol, um, no to other people when it's harmful for them or us. And if it's harmful for us, yeah, it's going to be harmful for them at the end of the day because it's unhealthy. So uh, there is a lot of self-development in learning to be able to say no to the world out there, to the pressures. You think how much people conform. We say every there's so many influencers now. What is the influencer for an adult? They, they need to be their own authority to learn from other people. Yeah, that's different. But to be swept along with trends and memes and themes, <laughs> you know, it's the lowest form of thinking. You can never master your mind and you'll never be able to say no when that social pressure comes on you, that peer pressure. Maybe like for a teenager, they take a drug, they're too scared to say no. Mm. Oh, you're chicken, you won't take it then. And like a fool, they may take a drug that damages them or even maybe kills them because it's a street drug and nobody knows how pure, impure it is. Or concentration or anything else so I feel for good healthy living we must master the word no and learn to say it with the absolute conviction that we really mean it then we will gain in our own self-respect the respect of others and we won't be compromising on our integrity now so I think we want to keep this interview quite short because if we <laughs> if we start off on the the various steps of self-development that impinge on this, uh, there's so many. You know, and you have to grow certain qualities of, that, uh, of the psyche, within the psyche, for that to happen. We talk about the, tra the 10 traits of the effective therapist. Uh, Rogers originally, 50s and 60s, delineated three. You know, by the 70s, there was 10 discovered. And most therapists don't ever learn that in their hypnotherapy training courses, even though it's a fundamental um, and more is being discovered as we go along of course about these and how to <coughs> excuse me how to develop them and so it's going to be critical for therapists to learn about those steps in self-development uh, and for anybody a client or anybody out there in the world who wants to learn to self-actualize to self-express to really express who they are in life and to do that they're going to have to learn about saying no. It's interdependent with those other steps in, in personal development. So that's just a quick over, overview. Incredible. So guys, that was on the importance of learning to say no and how to assert it. Dr. John Backlack, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening and watching.